morning students today we are going to learn about biology of chordates unit 3 first general characters of mammalia mammals are the animals with warm blood who give birth to their young ones they have mammary glands that help them produce milk to feed their younger children in mammalia we can observe that these animals can uh, give birth to their children and they can produce milk to feed them uh, uh, some other phyla they don't give milk to their children but in this phyla they have mammary glands which help to produce milk to feed their younger children next oil glands and sweat glands are present on their skin on their skin we can observe that uh, some sebaceous gland all oil glands and sweat glands are present the body wide hair fur that helps animals adjust to their environment the fur which is present on its body it helps to adjust to their environment next they are heterodont that is they have various kinds of teeth like humans we have incisors canines like that uh, they too have uh, different uh, types of teeth next mammals possess cervical vertebrae at, as well the trunk is divided between the abdomen and the thorax mammals breathe from their lungs a strong sense of hearing as three middle ear bones are provided by mammals mammals have a heart that is four chambered heart like uh, likewise in humans mammals also do have a four chambered heart presence of the lower jaws and single bone the brain is well formed divided into cerebrum cerebellum and medulla oblongata mammals are also able to lay eggs and they are referred as to as viviparous these mammals which uh, they also give birth to their younger ones and can also able to lay the eggs and this type both types is called as viviparous next digestive system of rana hex rana hexadactyla this is the digestive this is the diagram of the digestive system of frog the frog's mouth is where digestion begins it is equipped with feeble practically useless teeth the teeth of the frog is completely useless uh, these are present only in the upper jaw the frog's tongue is highly specialized we can observe that only the teeth are present on the upper jaw and the tongue of the frog which is the highly specialized which means it is the main uh, locomotor organ and main uh, organ which helps to feed feed uh, normally the tip of its tongue is folded backwards towards the throat from this position the frog can flick it out rapidly to grasp any passing prey to better hold this prey the tongue is sticky likewise the tongue is folded backwards towards the throat which means it is helpful for it for its it is helpful to grasp any prey which is passing through by its uh, body it's it the tongue is sticky and it uh, helpful more to better hold this prey next food passes from the frog's mouth into the stomach by the way of esophagus from the stomach the food moves into the small intestine where most of the digestion occurs most the large digestive glands the liver and the pancreas are attached to the digestive system by ducts a gallbladder is also present liquid waste from the kidneys travel by way of the ureters to the urinary bladder solid waste from the large intestine pass into the cloaca both liquid and solid waste material leave the body by way of the cloaca and the cloacal vent next parental care in amphibians the most important question in the third unit in comparison to birds and animal mammals light little parental care is found in amphibians parental care may be defined as any behavior exhibited by the parent towards its offspring offspring that increases the offspring's chances of survival which means in this every children take every parent uh, take care of their children likewise in amphibian also the parents take care about their force uh, of springs uh, which means uh, their uh, eggs or the little uh, children there are different types of parental care in amphibian the first one 
selection of site they select their site to take the care of their offsprings some amphibians lay lay their eggs in safe and moist land very near to water rakophorus pegli of japan lays eggs in a hole on muddy bank of river or pond with foamy mucus or mucus covered to prevent the eggs from drying in this we can observe that the rakophorus frog they lay eggs in near muddy bank of river or pond with the, the foamy mucus they can cover their eggs from the predator and also for from drying in gyrinophilus the eggs are laid under the stones in stream sometimes the eggs are taken up on the body in case of hyloids eggs are laid on the under surface of leaves hanging above the water in triton the eggs may be fixed with the aquatic feeds by glues next frothing of water in rakophorus maculates after the eggs are laid surrounding water is made frothy by the limb movements which prevent the eggs from desiccation and escaping from the eyes of the predators third one defending eggs males of green frog rana clamitans defend their eggs by not allowing some sized intruders in their territories males of mantophyrin robusta holes with hands cluster of eggs in gelatinous envelope fourth one formation of nest in this formation of nest we can see three type of nest mud nest leaf nest shoot nest some amphibians build nest for deposition of eggs in this nest they it is helpful to deposit their eggs first one mud nest hyla faber digs some small holes in the mud for deposition and the further development of the eggs in this the in species hyla faber it uh, make a small holes, holes in the mud for the de deposition and also it also helpful to develop the eggs next leaf nest in a south american tree frog philo medusa hypochondrials margin of the leaves are folded and glued together which act as a nest for the eggs they prepare through the leaves they prepare their nest through their leaf, through the tree leaves next shoot nest try to construct the nest by fixing fixing the shoots with a gelatinous secretion next direct development some terrestrial or tree frogs like hyloids and hyla nebulosi the eggs are hatched directly into tiny juvenile juveniles avoiding predator attach and larval morality for more, to avoid predator attack and the larval morality they directly the eggs directly hatch into a tiny juveniles next carrying eggs over the body in this uh, type of parent care we can observe they carry their eggs through their over the body first one coiling around the eggs amphiphonia ichthyophis females after laying eggs guard them by coiling body till the egg hatches in megalobatracus the males perform the same function in this we can observe that they coil the eggs around its body to protect the eggs from the predators next transferring tadpoles to water phyllobates spilobate species inhabiting tropical africa and south america hold the newly hatched tadpoles with their mouth and transport them to water in this type of species like phyllobates and spilobates they hold the newly hatched tadpoles after hatching the egg give rise to small tadpoles small little organism that uh, uh, is called as and they are called as tadpoles they hold the tadpoles which to transport them to water next eggs glued to the body salamander desmognathus fuscus female carry cluster of eggs glued to their body they are glued by their secretion they glued to their eggs to their body next eggs in back pouches in hyla goldi the females carry eggs on their back 
Next, organs as brooding pouches. South American male frog of Rhinoderma darwini keeps fertilized eggs in his vocal sacs where they undergo complete development. In this type of, in this species of male frog Rhinoderma darwini, they, uh, it keeps it, the fertilized eggs in its vocal sacs near the neck region. It where they undergo complete development in the vocal sacs. Next, in Halimbates, Baviceps, the female carries eggs in their buccal cavity. In, in the upper species, it uh, stores, it keeps its fertilized eggs in vocal sacs, in its vocal sacs. But in other species like Halimbates, Baviceps, the female carries eggs in their buccal cavity, which is the stomach region. Next, Viviparity. A special type of reproductive be behavior is observed in Salamander atra and salam Salamander maculosa. The eggs are placed inside the uterine cavity where the entire development takes place. The uterine wall functions physiologically as primitive placenta. Likes, likewise in humans, these some of the amphibians like Salamander atra and Salamander maculosa. These they help. Uh, these eggs are placed inside the uterine wall. Likewise, in humans, uh, the baby have, is present in the uterine cavity. Likewise, the in these amphibians, the eggs are placed inside the uterine wall, where only the entire development takes place. Next, general characters of reptilia. First one, these are creeping and burrowing terrestrial animals with scales on their body. This type of organisms are creeping and burrowing which present, which have scales on their body. These, they are cold-blooded animals found in most of the warmer regions of the world. Their skin is dry, rough, without any glands. The body is divided into... The body is divided into head, neck, trunk and tail. Few of these shed the scales on their skin as a skin cast. The respiration takes place with the help of the lungs. Limbs may or may not be present. If they have limbs, they are two pairs of pentadactyla limbs, each bearing claws. Snakes do not have limbs. The heart is three chambered. However, crocodiles have a four-chambered heart. Likewise, uh, earlier uh, phylum, we observed that in mammals, they possess four-chambered heart. But in reptilia, they have three-chambered heart. And however, some crocodiles, as they are, the, they are in the reptilium phyla, reptilia phyla, these crocodiles have four-chambered heart. The nervous system comprises four pairs of cranial nerves, Reptiles do not have external ear openings. Tympanum represents ear. Reptiles are generally uricotelic. They mostly excrete nitrogenous wastes as uric acid. The animals which secrete uric acid as the waste of waste material, they are called as uricotelic animals. Next, fertilization occurs in internal. Internally, the fertilization occurs. Fertilization is internal. They are oviparous and the eggs are very yolky. Development is direct. Example snakes, turtles, lizards, crocodiles. Next, structure and function of heart in calots. Heart is triangular and three chambered heart. In the, in the heart, we can observe two auricles and only one ventricle. Heart is covered by a membrane. The entire heart is covered by a membrane called pericardium. Inner membrane is called as endocardium. The outer layer is called as pericardium. And the inner layer is called as endocardium. The space between the heart and the pericardium is filled with fluid called pericardial fluid. As we mentioned earlier about that, the outer layer is pericardium and the inner layer is endocardium. The space between the pericardium and the endocardium is filled with the fluid and it the and the fluid is called as pericardial fluid truncus arteriosus is absent sinus venous is much reduced and present on the dorsal surface of the right auricle sinus venous is opens into the heart through sinoauricular aperture guarded by sinoauricular wall 
टू ऑरिकल सेपरेटेड बाय इंटर ऑरिकुलर सेप्टम ऑरिकल्स एंड वेंट्रिकल सेपरेटेड बाय ऑरिकलो वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टम एंड गॉर्डेड बाय ऑरिकलो वेंट्रिकुलर वॉल्स वेंट्रिकल्स डिवाइडेड बाय एन इनकम्प्लीट सेप्टम कॉल्ड इंटर वेंट्रिकुलर सेप्टम द इनर वॉल ऑफ वेंट्रिकल हैज इंटरलेज्ड मजिल कॉल्ड कॉर्डेट एंड द हार्ट इज कनेक्टेड टू लिवर बाय अ कॉर्ड ऑफ वाइट टिश्यू कॉल्ड गवर्नलाकुलम कॉर्डिस This is the structure of heart. In this, it is is right pre caval, and we, uh, earlier we have said that the heart of calves consists of two auricles, which means here, this one is right auricle and this one is left auricle. Two auricles and only one ventricle. This one is called as gubernaculum cordis. This is left pre-caval vein, right auricle, right ventricle. This was this is the ventral view, and the image present in this second image is called is in dorsal view, and the third one is a sectional view of the structure of calots. Next arterial system. The sinus venous is give rise to two precavals and one postcaval. In callus, three aortic arches arise from arise from the ventricle. First one, pulmonary artery, originate from right ventricle, divides into two pulmonary arteries, each entering the lung, carrying the deoxygenated blood for purification. Second one, left systemic aorta, originates from right ventricle runs down and forms the dorsal aorta carries deoxygenated blood next third one right systematic aorta originate from left ventricle runs down and forms the dorsal aorta carries oxygenated blood it gives it gives out the following arteries a common carotid artery from right systemic aorta divides into right left ca carotid which again divides as internal carotid and external carotid the internal carotids join with the systemic of its side by a artery called ductus caroticus subclavian arise from right systemic divides into two and supply to the four limbs arise from right subclavian and supplies blood to two vertebral column dorsal aorta formed by the union of two systemic aorta it gives the following branches there are 10 branches first one anterior esophageal and 13 pairs of parietal arteries and 4 to 8 pairs of gastric arteries a anterior mesenteric artery a posterior mesenteric artery a celiac artery a pair of gonadal artery a pair of renal arteries a pair of iliac arteries and finally a caudal artery apoda which means without legs poda means the walking legs and apoda means without legs the organs without legs are called as apoda these are limbless organs they which means this type of uh, in the class of apoda we we can observe that they do not have limb le- limbs so these are called as limbless organs they are also known as blind worms because their eyes are covered by skin or bone these are the blind worms which their eyes are covered by the skin the tentacles on their head are the chemosensory organs that help them to detect the underground they have the some tentacles like a they help uh, like as chemosensory organs uh, which helps to detect the underground prey example sicilians they possess venom glands they secrete mucus to reduce water loss next cutaneous respiration cutaneous respiration or cutaneous gas exchange sometimes called as skin breathing the respiration which uh, which occurs through the skin skin is called as cutaneous respiration is a form of respiration in which gas exchange occurs across the skin or the outer integument of an organism rather than gills or lungs the gases exchange which occurs 
through the skin or across the skin is called as cutaneous respiration. The skin of amphibians is a major site of respiration in all species for which measurements are available. Cutaneous respiration is the sole respiratory mode of lungless salamanders which lack lungs entirely at the constitute the largest family of salamanders. In this uh, species salamanders they do not have lungs. So these type of lungless animals is the lungless animals do have the cutaneous respiration which is the sole only the single respiratory mode which helps them to survive. Cutaneous respiration in frogs and other amphibians may be the primary respiratory mode during colder temperatures. Some amphibians utilizing cutaneous respiration have extensive folds of skin to increase the rate of respiration. Next examples include the Hellmander, Hellwender, Salamander and the Lake Titicaca was the frog with cutaneous respiration in Hellblenders across for more than 90% of oxygen uptake and carbon dioxide secretion. Next, Chelonia. Chelonia means the turtle. Body, let us know about the structure of the Chelonia. The body short, broad and oval. Limbs clawed or webbed or paddle like. Body encased in the firm shell or dorsal carapace and ventral plastron made of dermal bony plates the body is present with the outer dorsal the upper part of uh, we can observe that a shell like structure is present on the top of the turtle so the the part is called as the dorsal carapace and uh, in ventral we can observe that the plastron which is made up of a bony plates dermal bony plates thoracic vertebrae and ribs usually fuse to carapace Skull anapsid with a single nasal opening and without a parietal foramen. Quadrate is immobile. No sternum is found. Teeth is absent. Jaws with horny sheets. Clocal aperture a longitudinal slit. Heart incompletely four chambered with a partly divided ventricle. Copulatory organ single and simple. About 400 species of marine turtles, freshwater terrapins, terrestrial tortoise, examples like Chelon, Chrysums, Testudo, Trionyx, Germoclase. Next, Brain in Reptilia. Reptilian's brain shows advancement in size or proportions over that of amphibians because of complete terrestrial mode of life. Tail encephalon increases to belong the largest region of brain. Two long olfactory lobes are connected to cerebral hemispheres, which are larger than in amphibians because of greater thickness and enlargement of corpora strata. A fine vomeronasal nerve from the organ of Jacobson goes to the olfactory bulbs. Parapineal body, more often called the parietal eye is still found in spinodon and some modern lizards but is vestigial or absent in other reptiles a pair of auditory lobes are found posterior to optic lobes which are not hollow the third ventricle is reduced to a narrow cerebral aqueduct cerebellum is somewhat pear shaped and larger than in amphibians thank you